All right, so let's get into it because you know I'm a communications major, so I, I learned that early that public speaking is one of is the biggest fear of you of adults. Yeah. Um, and it's something that most people never really get over. Yeah. And like you said, it's something that especially this is a business show, so if you're not able to communicate, that's going to tremendously hurt you. Absolutely. Right. Um. So let's talk about this. How did you even get into this field, and what made you want to start working with people? So I first started out in the entertainment industry. Um, I was a music business major, and I, was, I have two degrees, so one in music education and pedagogy and another in music business. Um, I actually dropped out of grad school. Mm. I was doing a MBA in human resource management, and I had an opportunity to start touring. I met the legendary Betty Wright, um, who was already known by so many in the industry, and she took me under her wings as a mentor. And from there, I started touring all over the world. Um, touring doing what? Music? As a background, professional background singer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, touring all over the world. Um, and also, too, in my spare time, I was a teacher in the public school system. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and from there, I developed my own vocal issues. Um, I developed some called vocal nodules, which are uh, two bumps that form on the side of your vocal cords. And as a result of that, I lost my job because of it. And I only had $500 in my pocket. So from that, I had to figure out what was I going to do. And by that time, a lot of people knew that I was helping other people get their voices uh, together. Uh, long story short, I started working with a lot of singers in the industry. And then as I started to get a lot more known in what I did, I knew people like Eric Thomas and Jeremy Anderson. And I remember Eric coming to me and saying, sis, my voice is going, my voice is getting raspier and raspier and raspier. And I said, wait a minute, it's not just singers that need me. There are speakers over here that need me as well. So I started working with speakers then. Um, and then I met Neo. And Neo had a mastermind. And Neo lost his voice in the first day of the three-day mastermind. Uh -oh. As you know already, uh, amateurs make money on the front end, but experts make money on the back end, and he almost lost $4.2 million because of that. So I had to end up getting him vocally rehabilitated, and really that's how my career really started to blow up, but working with singers first and then speakers, and then I had a lot of uh, speakers that wanted to get into the public speaking space, uh, especially with live pitching, and I was able to help them to learn how to formulate overcoming speaking anxiety, as well as nailing their elevator pitches. So you said vocal rehabilitation. This, yes. this is interesting. So yeah. let's just take him for example. Shout out to Neil, that's our guy. How, how did you diagnose this, right? Did, yeah. you, did You could obviously hear it, but what was the causes? Was he straining? What, like, what did you see yeah. while he was speaking that like, he needs some, he needs some assistance? Absolutely. That's a great question. So first thing is mic. Uh. A lot of times, a lot of speakers never think about their microphone. Uh, etiquette when they're on stage and he had a lapel mic and the, the lapel mic was so much was all the way up here so he was screaming the whole time and I tell any speaker that's doing masterminds or anything publicly it's important for you to make sure that you practice proper microphone etiquette so that things don't happen like that he also really didn't know how to utilize his voice as far as how to project it and carry it and that is something that we I teach called just project uh, resonation so learning how to properly place your voice with intonations and inflections, that will cause him not to put so much strain on his throat and then on his vocal cords. And then also to one of the biggest challenges that a lot of speakers have and which Neo did have was not drinking water in between speaking. It doesn't matter if you're on podcast, it doesn't matter if you're on stage, you always should be taking sips of water because your vocal cords don't really get the water to them directly. So you have to be hydrating over long periods of time so that your body itself can create what we call watery mucus that, high, that lubricates the vocal cords. So there's a combination of a couple things that I recognize. One, he wasn't drinking enough water. Two, poor micro etiquette. Uh, not breathing correctly and utilizing breath support to the voice. All of these things were that's, uh, variables that actually caused these issues. So, okay, so let's get into this. Yeah. <clears throat> what, ha, what are people doing wrong when it comes to public speaking? And what are like the, the 10 commandments or say to actually always keep in mind when doing public speaking? Great question. Uh, one of the things that I say to speakers all the time is you're a vocal athlete. So just like how every great athlete out here has a coach, a lot of speakers don't even have speaking coaches. They don't have vocal coaches. So the first thing is get a coach. 
Uh, the second thing that I would say when it comes to, like you say, the Ten Commandments is you need to have a warm up regimen, just like how you have to stretch before you ball on the court. It's the same thing before you get on a podcast, before you get on stage to speak, do vocal warm up. So I actually give the top six vocal warm ups that speakers can do. Can I share one with yeah. you all? Sure. So one of the things that they can do, for example, is literally just, and it may seem a little weird, but literally you can do what we call lip trills. And you just go for males, you all could be deeper. What that does is called SOVT exercises. It's just muscle relaxation exercises. So it will help you to actually stretch those muscles so that you don't have to uh, be straining. You'll be surprised what happens. You'll lose your voice quicker. So make sure you get a coach. Second thing is make sure you have a warm-up regimen. Mm -hmm. Third thing is hydrate hydrate, hydrate. A lot of people are dehydrated. And because of that, speakers never think about why they need to hydrate. Uh, practice proper microphone etiquette, right? The next one I would say is learn how to breathe correctly. But also another thing too is slow down. Make sure that you're speaking clear and concise. Um, I see a lot of speakers uh, when anxiety starts to come up, you know, they get very anxious and nervous. And because of that, they'll either speak faster, they'll start to stutter and things like that. So just making sure that you take a moment and breathe um, and make sure that you can be able to formulate in your head what you're gonna say next so that you don't stutter. I would say another thing too is a lot of people strain and scream a lot and you don't have to do that, right? Um, if you learn how to really project your voice best, you'll know that you can be able to say what you need to say, make sure you're speaking directly into the mic and be able to project well. Um, there's so many others that's there, but those are the primary things a lot of people just deal with, making sure that they can project their voice, making sure that they have proper breathing etiquette, making sure that their message is clear and concise, they're articulating. And also too, I think one of the biggest common mistakes too that I see a lot of speakers do is they don't have proper eye contact with their audience when they're on stage mm -hmm. you'll be surprised that you can lose a person in the first 28 seconds of a speech and so when you when we are doing the pitch judging and when you all are doing the pitch judging in the first 30 seconds you're going to know from that person being on stage if they're actually serious about what they're doing and if they're prepared very interesting mm -hmm. i want to talk on, on three things because most people think it's get up talk in front of the microphone and however I deliver it, people will receive it. Yeah. But the, the three most important things I'm hearing, tonality, yes. because most I think I can sing, but some people tell me I'm tone deaf when I try, <laughs> pitch and projection. Mm -hmm. So can you break, break down those three and tell the differences and, and how important they are when somebody is going to give a speech? Absolutely. Have you ever sat uh, and listened to someone's speech with the same monotone? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure you tap out after a while. And what we're finding is that tonal inflections are a big thing. Uh, making sure that you can raise the pitch sometimes. Men, sometimes it's kind of challenging to do that. Women, we are more prone to do those things, but you'd be surprised there are people that have mastered the art of public speaking where they've learned to match intonation. So learning when to go low in your tone, learning when to go higher in your tone, and that should happen when people are pitching. Um, I actually teach a lot of speakers when they're on stage, when they first make an intro, to make sure with intonation as a speaker that they are practicing with their pitch control going up and down. It, it does something to the listener and it's going to do something psychologically to you as well. Uh, and so that's one of the things I will say with intonality. When it comes to projection, I can't stress it. Microphone etiquette is, the microphone is, is a connection to your voice it continues your voice most microphones are one directional so when you're on stage as a speaker and i've seen this even in pitching uh the last pitch i was a pitch judge at the last competition i had speakers who were literally had their mics down here and at the end of it people couldn't really hear you'd be surprised how that will affect a person's pitch just to the fact that they don't have that microphone here I've seen people get a better response, making sure that their voice was connected to that microphone, than they just kind of walking around and the mic is all over the place. That interferes with projection. Um, there are times where a microphone goes out and you should be able to engage your diaphragm. You should be able to make sure that you are using the air to project your voice so that people can hear you so it doesn't stop the flow of the pitch should it happen. Uh, the other thing that I would say is definitely breathing exercises. It not only helps with reducing stress 
and anxiety and nerves and stage fright, but it also really helps with making sure that the quality of your sound is actually what it needs to be so that you can be able to effectively communicate to the audience and get your point across. You all are going to meet people that are going to have great visuals. They're going to tell you about their market, their preposition and their unique selling preposition. They're going to tell you about market stats and everything like that. But how they show up when they open up their mouth to speak is going to tell a lot about the decision that you make to choose a winner. It will.